consider a very large non-conducting sheet with a uniform surface charge density sigma, where sigma is positive. Here this sheet is drawn edge on, so the sheet is perpendicular to the screen. Find the electric field produced by this sheet of charge a distance d away. This very large sheet of charge has planar symmetry, and all its field lines are parallel to each other. And all the field lines are also perpendicular to the large sheet of charge. So Gauss's law is much more convenient than Coulomb's law for this scenario. Again, when we use Gauss's law to find the electric field, we need to make a Gaussian surface that goes through the point we are interested in. And we need the E and the cosine of the dot product to be constant so we can take them out of the integral. What Gaussian surface should we make? To take advantage of the planar symmetry, we can make a rectangular prism or a triangular prism. We can even make a star-shaped prism. But for convenience, I would make it a cylinder. I need this face of the cylinder to go through the point we're interested in. So this part has a distance d, and to make use of symmetry, this distance is also d. There is no requirement on the shape and size of the cross-section. So we can just make the cross-section round with an arbitrary area of A. When we look for flux, we can just focus on the part of the Gaussian surface that gives us a non-zero flux. Which part of the Gaussian surface has non-zero flux? The two ends of the cylinder have non-zero flux. There is no flux through the curved part of the cylinder because no field lines go through this part. This means that we only have to take care of the two ends of the cylinder when we look for flux. Based on planar symmetry, the electric field has the same magnitude everywhere on the two ends. So we can take E out of the integral. What about the cosine? Everywhere on the two ends, the electric field and the dA are in the same direction. So we have the same angle 0 degrees everywhere, and cosine 0 degrees is 1. So the flux equals to E times 1 times, uh, what's the area when we add up the area of the two ends together? We get 2A, because it's A on this side and A on that side. And this also equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. What is the net enclosed charge we can find inside this Gaussian surface. We have surface charge density, so we need to multiply the surface charge density by the area. And inside the Gaussian surface, we only have this area that has the charge, which is the same as the cross-sectional area, A. As we expected, the arbitrary choice of area A does not affect the electric field. So the electric field is uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Since the strength of the electric field does not depend on d, the distance, that means uh, when the distance doubles, the electric field would stay the same. This would be true as long as the distance is still much, much smaller than the size of the large sheet. So on this side of the sheet, the electric field has a constant magnitude and they all point to the right. So on this side, we have uniform electric field. On that side, we also have uniform electric field, just uh, the electric field is on a different direction. Since all field lines are parallel with each other, the field lines uh, do not spread out. That matches the fact that uh, we have uniform electric field over here because the field line density does not change. Another thing is, 
since the electric field lines go out of positive charge and go into negative charge, and the dA is always the outward normal vector. When we use Gauss's law to find the electric field, this angle here will be zero degrees if Q enclosed is positive, and the angle will be 180 degrees if Q enclosed is negative.